The couple of stories that have caught my eye today. We've currently got six people isolating, so, you know, it's a pretty tough time for us at the minute. Now, fortunately, our team are amazing, and they're literally just saying, just tell us what you need and where you need us. But we are very mindful that between now and August, we're in for a bit of a rocky ride. Well, I've got to start the show by talking about this in terms of today's news, because I know it's affecting a lot of people who are listening tonight. And do let us know your story on 85058. This is what they're calling the pandemic when it gets a catchy name as well. Makes it even more important. Hundreds of thousands of people are having to self-isolate after being pinged by the NHS COVID app and the numbers are growing and growing. We have the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition isolating as as well, but we've heard enough from the politicians. Let's talk to real business owners who've been affected. Now, we've heard about places like Iceland and Green King, who just two companies who've said the pandemic is why they've had to shut stores. It's not a surprise. If you have a look and break it down, actually, it's workplace services, as you would imagine. Places that we're shopping in, that we're drinking in. Anywhere we're going indoors is where it's spreading most and more people are being pinged. They're coming face to face with such a volume of people. Manufacturing and engineering's next, then transport and logistics. Government actually quite affected. Uh, education and training health, life sciences and, and so on. But way out in lead is workplace services and manufacturing and engineering. Now, the CBI, which is a, a, a busy a, a business lobby group, they say the problem's going to hit the economic recovery. And in terms of getting about travel, which I've, I've just mentioned, quite high up the list, Thameslink and Southern Rail have said they're cutting services at the moment because of the number of staff isolating and emergency services in the NHS are warning people to expect longer waits. So this is yet an, another problem of COVID, isn't it? As you open up and as you try and do the things that we haven't done in a long time, whether you agree with how we opened up or not, we realise we can't do them if everyone's going into isolation. So does the app need to get up to date or is this just another thing of this new normal, as some people like to call it? Carmen Parker runs the Lifeboat Fish Bar in Scarborough. Now, I'm not lying to you, Carmen. I know I've been in it, but I can't remember when. But I have been in the lifeboat fish bar when it's in Scarborough. Have so, you really? Yes, but I, I don't know when, and I've been I've been going through it, and it wasn't that long ago either. I, I think it was literally like just before COVID. So I, oh. I, I can't remember why I was there, but it was anyway. You're with us to talk Brilliant. about what's been going on with the lifeboat fish bar, and Kate Lester is the CEO of Diamond Logistics. Hi, Kate. Oh, good evening. How are you? I haven't bought fish and chips off you. It's a bit more complicated, right? So <laughs> what are we looking at? What are you doing? 30, 30 sites, is it? Uh, we've got 30 sites around the UK and uh, we're a fulfillment and delivery network. So we work primarily for small businesses delivering their stuff for them. Right. So delivering stock rather than delivering uh, parcels and stuff like that, you're delivering produce. No, no, no. no. We absolutely deliver everything. So it can be anything from gin to honey to PPE to blood transfusions to stuff for blue chip clients. So we um, cover a whole spread, thousands and thousands of clients around the UK. Well, well, let's start there because we have reports in national newspapers of shells looking empty. And we also have Sainsbury's and Lidl and Tesco and Morrison's. You know, talking of these significant gaps in in their shells, some are having to draft in employees. But you getting stuff to businesses. If if there's no stock, if if there's no produce, it, then then that's a non-starter already, isn't it? Well, it, it, it's uh, the uh, delays are going throughout the supply chain now. So you know, the um, transport logistics in, industry has been hammered over the last eighteen months, not just in terms of our demand being increased um, with people's increased reliance on home delivery. But equally speaking, we've had the challenges of Brexit. We've had the challenges of um, the Suez Canal, which has caused delays in warehouses being filled with stuff. Um, and now we've got this 20 to 25% uh, of the workforce off as well. Mm. And, and uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're incredibly impacted. And you guys are seeing that. You know, you go to your local yeah. shops and the shelves are empty, right? Is that roughly where you are, 20, 25% of staff off? Yeah, well, I'm I'm self isolating as we speak. My son got COVID last week, and himself and um, his gra- my granddaughter, mm. um, we're all in the same uh, support bubble. So we've all been self isolating. We get out tomorrow. You can maybe dig a little deeper in that you've got these options where I'll move staff from one place to another. I'll maybe bring in temps. I'll look at a bigger cash flow, etc. Whereas business, and, and that's not saying it's not difficult. Kate, believe me, I know it is. I don't mean it in that way, in a negative way. Carmen, you, this is a case of a very small staff, probably yeah. five, ten. And yeah, it is. if they're gone, they're gone, right? In, a, in smaller yeah. towns, where are you going to get the staff? 
Well, at this time of year, it's difficult to get experienced staff enough at this time of year because we're very, very busy. Mm. Um, but you can either take on more staff, but then they don't. You don't. You don't then have the hours for the staff if if they're all available. So oh, it's it's a hard one at the mm. moment. You sound you just stressed. Have to do what, without what, really. <laughs> what, is that what you've done? I mean, are you able to? Open? Well, yeah. Well, we're open. We what we do. We we're very fortunate in the fact that we have a takeaway as well as a cafe throughout most of this this time of year. Throughout um, summer is our main time of year mm. to earn any money really so seaside town is Scarborough so we rely heavily on tourism so really basically I've not opened our cafe until well I was planning on opening it this week but I, I hadn't I took the decision not to open it because of test and trace mm. because if we tested and traced then we would have to shut the whole business down for 10 10 days or so you, however so you, long it takes so at least now possibly weren't even ill so at least now you can do takeaways you open the doors so, people sit in ping the staff are gone that's it gone. right yeah. and because of the levels of and we're gone yeah as soon as the <laughs> levels of, of infection we have now I get I suppose Kate that Carmen's kid who she's with every day has got COVID and regardless of how many jabs that, that Carmen's had it, I, I, yeah. I, I understand that isolation but Kate in in the case of a regular flow of people, for example, passing airport security or coming into a, a, a Tesco or whatever, how how does the test and trace up? How does this evolve in order that, that, to make it work? That, that that's the bit that I think is most contentious. You know, um, most of my team have been double vax. Kate's been cut off by the government. That's yeah. what I'm only joking. She'll be back in a second. Okay. Kate, are you there? She's gone. Let me just pick up what Kate oh, is saying. Yeah. And this is the argument, Carmen, is that if yeah. you've had the double vaccine and if you're taking precautions behind a glass screen with a mask yeah. on, and exactly. if you can test negative, if you can take the yeah. NHS lateral flow and go, look, I'm negative, I've taken all the precautions, I've had a big screen of glass. There, yeah. there have been cases where people have been standing outside people's houses and they've been pinged mm. and there's been a wall yeah. between them. So do you Crazy. think they need to look at the difference between double vaccinated in a workplace and your kid getting it like kids kid has yeah i think that if you're negative and you're especially if you're double vaccinated because my husband and i were double vaccinated and some of my staff are, there some of my staff have started to be vaccinated the one of the girls that's actually off at the moment she's being vaccinated she's not got it but there's a possibility that a member of her family will have it because mm. of that i can't allow her to come into work until we're sure a family hasn't mm. got it otherwise it all then it's like a domino effect isn't it on the whole workplace mm. um but if if you're double vaccinated surely and you're testing negative surely you shouldn't have to isolate. Otherwise, where's the point of the vaccination? Yeah, the, the, where's the point in all this? If on the tests, if they take no notice of them and you've still got to isolate for 10 days. The, there is an argument of how long it is until the symptoms start to show and how you can be negative, but it's rarely 10 right. days. So it is actually, yeah. cut, could be shorter. It feels like it needs to be an evolution like there has been with um, travel, of course, because a double vaccinated person, I've, I've went through it. I've just done yeah. what was meant to be a five day test and release turn into it which was nothing oh, to do with right, the company no. who were doing it it was got to do with uh, the delivery of the stuff but uh, that's changed now I could go to the yeah. same place tomorrow and come back I have to take a test in day two but I do not have to isolate because you I've see. got the the, the uh, certificate that says I've had two vaccinations so this seems to be what most people running small businesses and big businesses are saying is that we have yeah. to look at that rule because so many staff have yeah, the double do. vaccination um, yeah. I suppose the thing for you as well it's not you know as a small business as we said, you can't really, you don't have that depth of staff that you can call on, but yeah. also you still rely on the deliveries as well. And we're seeing everything from empty shelves to, you know, we're hearing of um, mm -hmm. petrol shortage as well, pumps running dry at BP petrol stations. You know, you just don't open your do wow. doors and magic the stock, do you? Yeah. No, you don't. And you're going to love this one because whether it's because of Brexit, whether it's because of COVID, I'm not certain why it is, but the price of fish has gone up 40%. Right. <laughs> Everything, it's gone up massively. You're getting massively. hit from all sides, aren't you? So, yeah, it's gone up massively over the last few months, literally the last couple of months. Mm. Um, 
and there's a shortage. There's there's possibly, quite possibly, a sh- going to be a shortage by the end of July, right in the middle of the summer season. Wow. So um, at the moment, we're just, just well, I, I try and be positive about things and I just try and organise myself as best I can, really, because mm. what can we do? The mm. whole world's in this situation, so... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're getting a tough, but you've also got a bit of perspective and a, and a bit of a smile on your face to hide a wee bit of anxiety, which is great. Sounds like I like yeah. to hear that type of. Uh, I, I can tell that your pecker's up, which is good, and um, yeah, it's good to hear, Carmen. Well, best of luck. I say to everybody in Scarborough who's listening to this show, I urge you whether it is in the lifeboat fish bar or any other fish and chip shop in Scarborough, Friday's officially fish and chips day. Everybody out. Support those local oh, businesses. Oh, it certainly is. <laughs> and they're very nice. They're a good start to the weekend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Carmen, thank you so much. Best of luck. Hopefully things will get better. Thank you. And uh, You too. We lost Kate Lester, CEO of, of Diamond Logistics. Her internet must have went up the, up the left. Um, but thank you uh, for that as, as, as well. I, I appreciate that. Um, 85058 uh, on the, the text. Although they're being swamped at the moment with This House Believes, which the motion tonight, and it's a we always have a real fun debate, and it's not about the right answer, it's about the best argument. That's where it differs maybe.